So we haven't done all that many quests with the butter goods, but we all know who they are. At first glance, they don't really seem that special. But I was recently tipped about something that led to the possible uncovering of a huge family secret. Because the butter goods may not be like any other Jorvigian. No, they're vampires. Okay, so I know that the idea of the butter goods being vampires may seem kind of random and unlikely at first. Or maybe not, I mean, this is Jorvik. But there are actually various things that hint towards that, so do hear me out on this one, alright? So in one of the quests that we have with the butter goods, we get this comment from Scott, who's straight up says that he knows that vampires exist, as well as werewolves. He's never met any of them, but he just knows. But how does he know this? I mean, yeah, he does explain it as being pretty much common knowledge that there are monsters in Jorvik. But the thing is, that's not common knowledge. None of the ordinary Jorvigians seem to believe in the old legends, and they all just brush them off as fairy tales. The only characters that know that there's more to this island are the ones with special skills or abilities themselves, or those with a strong connection to the people who do. The butter goods, on the other hand, have no way of knowing about this side of Jorvik. So how come Scott is so sure that these creatures exist? I find that very suspicious. But okay, another reason why I think this theory might be true is simply their appearance. Look, they have these large black shadows under their eyes, super contoured cheekbones and pale skin. And yeah, at first I was like, okay, maybe this is just a new art style for when they released Epona. But if you run around looking at other NPCs in Epona, none of them look anything like the butter goods. So then I was like, okay, well, maybe it's because of their family image. After all, they are known for being snobby and mean. But no, that's not it either. Because first of all, there are good people in the butter good family that still look creepy like this. And second of all, other bad characters don't look like that. Take Buck, for example. He came with Epona, he's nothing but a mean bully, but he just looks like an innocent child. And what about Professor Hayden, who isolates himself from others and hates pretty much everything except for his pet spider and, eventually, our character? For some reason, the butter goods seem to be the only ones that look pale and spooky. Or, no, that's not entirely true. The butter goods do remind me of some other NPCs, for example, Terrace Rockwell. You know, the guy that was a zombie. Even after he's cured, he looks very different from the rest of his family, which shouldn't be the case, cause, you know, they're family. The same goes for Frank Einstein, who was also a zombie. He looks nothing like his sister, even after he's cured. So naturally, I am led to believe that they look different for that exact reason. They were both zombies. So maybe the reason why the butter goods look so spooky and pale is that they too are supernatural beings. Like, you know, vampires. But it doesn't end there. The butter goods themselves are not all that looks kind of vampire-like. The family mansion is spooky too and has a lot of stereotypical vampire elements. There's the overgrown vines on the mansion itself and the surroundings, indicating that it's old, which we know that it is by the way. There's also the spooky trees and overgrown bushes, accompanied by surprisingly well-kept flower beds. It's pretty surprising how GED has turned its place into a construction site, and yet there's flowers everywhere. The flowers outside the mansion used to be red like roses, which is also a vampire thing, but for some reason they're now yellow. I'm not quite sure what that is about. The high walls and fences also give this feeling of isolation and mysteriousness, and that's very common for vampires too, cause, you know, eternal life does that to you. And then of course, there's the Fort Pinta festival. This was the part that I was tipped about, because I completely mistook this for some random chit chat. Scott says multiple things that sound very suspicious when added to the previous evidence. Like him being furious that Tim put garlic in his drinks, because who knows what would happen if he drank some. And yeah, sure, some people are actually allergic to garlic, but that's a very specific allergy to put in there. 
why not just give him a more common allergy, like peanuts or milk? Oh, yeah, that's right, because vampires hate garlic. But that's not all! He also complains about how the sun makes it hard for him and his family, especially during the summer months here in Jorvik, and that his father can barely even leave the house for that reason. Now, why would the summers be especially hard for them? I mean, surely the sun is just as strong for everyone in Jorvik, right? Well, not if you're a vampire, it's not. So let's add all of this stuff together and look at the whole picture, shall we? The Buttergoods and their surroundings look unusually spooky and vampire-like. Scott tells us that vampires exist, he hates garlic, and the whole family has trouble facing the summer sun. I don't know about you, but the way I see it, there's pretty much no other explanation. They are vampires. I really wish there were more information to work with, but sadly the Buttergoods are currently minor characters in the story, so digging deeper into this would not be possible at this point. Still, this amount of evidence is more than enough to convince me, especially considering that we don't have a lot of background information on the Buttergoods. I'd love to hear your arguments and what you think about this theory, so do make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I also have to give massive credit to the person who got me working on this theory, which was IssyCookie395. I would not have caught on to this without her comments, so I am very grateful for her input and I hope that you will all give her some well-deserved love. And with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. So I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, if you did, I'll see you around! Bye!